So ever since starting at Atlas, I just walk around with my head so much higher, and I'm just so more, so much more confident in myself. And you know, all the people here, like this is my happy place. Like all the people here, they're just so welcoming, and I've met some of the greatest people I've ever met. Jiu-Jitsu, I think the best way to describe Jiu-Jitsu is uh, physical chess. Um, it's very complex. There's always a counter to each move. So the great thing about Jiu-Jitsu is that you're constantly learning, you're constantly improving, and there's always something new to learn. So um, that's one of the things I really liked is it takes your whole life to master. And even after you've mastered it by getting the highest belt possible, there's still so much to learn. It's, a, it's constantly changing. I was a... Uh, fan of the UFC when like the UFC first came out and uh, I was watching a fight and they started talking about Henzo Gracie and I googled him and found out that he had a school in New York City so um, I was really interested in, in learning about MMA and Jiu Jitsu so um, I just after work one day I walked to Henzo Gracie's school down in uh, uh, the city and walked in and here I am 10 years later. I first started off as a trainer and like my, what made me happy with training people is that I actually saw them change and I saw them improve and get better. And um, the problem I had once I got to upper management was it just became a money game. It was just all about money, 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 money. And uh, I started jujitsu and um, just saw how it changed my life and how it gave me, you know, I was working 16 hours a day and I still made an hour each day to do jujitsu. And that like kept me sane, it kept me calm. And I saw what it did to me and um, I loved the art of it, so I decided that I wanted to uh, uh, venture off and, and make it into a career. I ran a jiu-jitsu school in New York City, um, and um, at that time I was an instructor, I just ran it. I taught strength and conditioning class. Um, I had another uh, black belt there who taught the jiu-jitsu program, and um, while I was there, uh, my partner, my business partner, and I decided to open a school up in Albany because I traveled back and forth from Albany to New York because uh, my dad was sick and uh, he had a stroke. So I was coming back and forth uh, to, to help my mom and see my dad. So um, eventually it came to the point that, you know, I wanted to, to be with my dad more. Um, he was just always at home by himself and he wasn't really improving health-wise. So I made a decision to uh, basically buy out my partner, move up here to this school and uh, up to the Albany area, and uh, I bring my dad to work with me, you know, three days a week, and uh, he's improved a ton. And so I help my family, and I also built a family here uh, of great people. I've trained uh, all different sorts of martial arts my entire life. I've trained in Taekwondo, Karate, uh, boxing, wrestling, Judo. If you, if you can think about it, I've probably trained uh, at least a little bit in it. Um, what really drew me to Atlas Jiu-Jitsu is the fact that um, I was able to train maybe once a week when I first started, and that was maybe for an hour class in one of the smallest classes we had. And I mean, I would go back, I would go back you know, once a week and everybody would remember my name so they'd know who I was and it felt like, you know, I wasn't just a, you know, a paycheck. I wasn't just, you know, paying for the bills for the uh, academy. It felt like I was actually a member, like a family member and people actually cared about how my day was, you know. So, you know, they would remember me. I'd go to other academies and I would have been training there for, you know, a couple months at a time and I would have been able to go more than like five times a week and they still wouldn't remember my name because I was a lower belt or I was newer and it just seemed like they didn't really care. So, I mean, just being at Atlas, it just felt like I was a family and I mean, there's, there's just nothing like it, no other environment like it. That's why I'm here. At first, when people don't know you or don't know your abilities, they're trying to be nice. Like they don't want to crush you and smash you. And, um, everybody wants, I think everybody here wants to see people come back and do jujitsu because they love jujitsu too. So they want to like share the love. Um, so everybody seems to come back happy if everybody's nice to each other on their first day. My 
my house and where I grew up is Hudson. Um, I opened this school up in Albany because it's the, the big city that's nearby. So I thought uh, business here would be uh, a little more achievable. So uh, I wanted to bring something to Hudson because being a kid growing up in Hudson, really all there was to do was get in trouble. Um, there was, you know, there wasn't, there's not much to do there. Uh, there's, you know, there's no bowling alley, there's no pool hall, there's, there's, there's nothing there to do. So uh, as a kid, I used to get in a bunch of trouble. And uh, when I moved back as an adult to Hudson, I, I started thinking that I wanted to give uh, the people in the area something to do that, that was beneficial to them. So um, I started off in a small gym called The Finish Line. Um, I just rented a little small uh, spot in the gym and uh, started training people there and teaching people jujitsu there. And uh, after about a year, it didn't grow that much. You know, I had about 15 people. And uh, then one of my students said, you know, uh, you have to look at this as like, this is your garden. And the more you feed it, the more you, you put into it, the bigger it's gonna grow. And I just really like took that to heart and really like just kept putting my all into it. And I'd go to class every day and I'd teach even though there was only a few people there. And uh, from there, we went to another location in Hudson in which the school grew a little bit more. And uh, after that, we moved to another location um, that was really, really small. But the weird thing about it was we were actually in the back hallway of, of a, uh, weird kids jump place that they had like the trampolines and uh we were in a long hallway that was probably like yay wide and all of a sudden people just started coming we packed the place and uh things started to get more successful and then we finally moved to our location that we're at now which is a great location uh you know at a busy corner in the, in the city of hudson and um the school has continued to grow and and be successful, and now it actually is just about the same size as the Albany School here. I mean, most people think I'm crazy because I, I'm the only teacher. I teach, um, besides the kids' class, um, which I have help um, from two lovely gentlemen in Hudson, and I have um, um, some help here as well in Albany. Um, I teach all the classes, so I literally have days that I go to Hudson, I train my private clients in the morning, I come here, I train my clients during the day. Um, I teach jiu-jitsu class, strength conditioning class. Then I teach two more night classes here. And then I get in my car and then I have to race back to Hudson and I have to teach there. So it's, it's long days, you know. Um, that's one of the hardest things is that, you know, I don't want to, uh, I want to put my all into both schools. So I do, but it just takes a lot out of me. It took me, you know, a couple of years to find the right instructor. You know, and I really was looking for somebody that, that cared about the things I cared about, that, that was honorable and loyal and respectful and that wouldn't just give me my black belt, that I had to earn it. And, um, and uh, Julio was all those things. You know, I was looking for my Yoda and that's how I look at him, he's like Yoda. I want Jiu Jitsu and Atlas to be, as cliche as it sounds, I want it to be their happy place. Like I want Jiu Jitsu to make them happy and I want no matter how bad your day is or what's going on in your personal life, that you know when you walk in the door, that we're all here to, to make you feel better. And to me, that's the most important thing. It's more important than, you know, submitting somebody or beating somebody up. Uh, the most important thing is, is taking care of each other, always having each other's back. And, uh, uh, you know, my, my key things are loyalty, respect, honor. And um, that's one of the things about martial arts that I truly respect and love is that it looks for those qualities in people. And unfortunately, in today's time, um, even martial arts schools are starting to not really look for those, those traits. They just base things on talent. And I feel like the opposite, everything should be based on those things. And the talent and the, and the skill will come.